this variant is concerning because it has more mutations than any variant we have seen so far. And they are concentrated, most of the mutations are concentrated in the spike region, and there are more mutations than we saw for alpha, beta, or gamma, or delta. So that's a concern. We don't know what direction it will go in, but at least theoretically, many of the mutations which have been mapped and modeled are mutations that might result in an increase in transmissibility as well as a potential decrease in the ability of vaccine-induced antibodies to neutralize the virus. So while we don't know yet what is going to happen, based on the sequence data alone, it is concerning. I think based on what we have seen, particularly the rapid growth in the number of cases in South Africa. This is a variant that has likely already spread beyond 15 countries. You might remember on Friday, we said two countries. Then on Saturday, it became more. Sunday, it became more. Monday, it's even more. And that will keep increasing as more countries sequence what they've got and try and figure out whether they do or do not have Omicron at the moment. Particularly in India, we have had a lot of infection. You know, 67 0% zero positivity in June, July came mostly from infections. And we know that the combination of infection and vaccination gives you the broadest possible range of antibodies. So if anybody in the world is going to be well protected against new variants, it's going to be that population in India that has both been infected and vaccinated. Now, the other thing to remember is that even if you do get infected, we now have new tools that we didn't have six months ago. We have drugs that can be taken orally. We have antibodies. We don't know how well or badly the antibodies will work, but the drugs, molnupiravir, fluvoxamine, and Paxlovid, these drugs are available to be taken by people orally if they develop infection. And even in people that have risk factors, these drugs reduce the incidence of severe disease. So, and then finally, coming to the real question that you asked me, we can do plus minus and we can make vaccines pretty quickly. Pfizer believes that it will have a vaccine into people in 100 days. Moderna thinks that it will be somewhere between three and four months. So if new vaccines are needed, we can look at making them much quicker than we made the original vaccine. So I think people need to understand that we are not today where we were six months ago or 12 months ago. We have many more tools at our disposal. We've only had this virus for two years. And every day we learn something new about it whether it's drugs or vaccines or new variants, and we will continue to learn. But we are in a situation where we have much greater understanding than we did 18 months ago. And we have tools to handle. If we stay calm, stay sensible, look at the data, make sure that we analyze the data well, we can come up with reasonable approaches that allow us to get on with life and be able to handle the virus. What I think is that this is a virus that has spread in asymptomatic people. The likelihood is that it has traveled much beyond the 15 countries that have reported the virus so far. And those numbers will continue to increase. So do we stop all international travel? How long do we do that for? Do we focus only on countries where the virus has been reported? 
I think that's a decision for policymakers to make, but I can guarantee that that is not going to stop the virus from coming into the country if it is not here already. Because this is a virus that is an asymptomatic individual, sooner or later it will come. So I, while I believe tracking, tracing, and making sure that we have rapid turnaround of sequencing data or we use the characteristic of the virus, which is the S-gene dropout, to identify people who are infected with Omicron, it is an important time to be very, very watchful. But I don't think the way to do this is to shut borders every time there is a new wave. 